Hello there, my name's Simon from CramneyExam.com and welcome to week 7, day 5 of your 12-week preparation course to get you ready for your FCE, CAE or Matura Advanced Exam. In this video today, because of course it's Friday, we're looking at speaking. In this video today, we're going to be looking at the part 3 question of the FCE and CAE speaking exam. And I'm going to be looking at some videos, critically analysing them from the point of view of a teacher, um, pointing out the good things, the bad things, what you should be doing, what's missing, and so on, so on. But before I do that, please make sure that you've watched my initial video, which looks at part three for the FCE and for the CAE. You'll find that on week three, day five. In that video, I explain what part three is all about, what it, what it's trying to do, how are you meant to prepare for it, and so on, so on. So if you watch that video, you'll be in a much better position to deal with my critical breakdown and indeed your critical breakdown of this of the two videos that we're going to have a look at. And of course, you'll know what part three is all about. So uh, everything that happens in the video will be uh, no surprise to you. So make sure you go and check out my video from week three, day five. You'll see the link in the video description below. You'll also need to have the uh, you'll also need to watch the videos from Cambridge. Uh, Cambridge produced these fantastic videos for our benefit so we can see how the exam works and we can see people doing the exam so we can prepare for the speaking exam ourselves. So big thank you to Cambridge and you'll see links to those videos in the video description below. Okay, with all of that being said, uh, this is how it's going to work. We're going to have a look at the FCE first and then we're going to have a look at the CAE. Um, before we have a look at each video, I'd like you to stop this video, watch the um, FCE part 3 all the way through, um, and then come back to this video, and then I'll break it down, and then we'll have a look at the CAE video in exactly the same way. I'd like you to stop the video, have a look at the CAE part 3, then come back to this video where I then begin to break down the video and hopefully you'll be able to take away the things that I say and be better prepared for when you do the speaking exam. So that's how it's going to work. So bearing that in mind, find the link to the FCE part three video in the video description below. Click on that, watch it, pause this video, and then once you've watched it, come back and we'll go through FCE part three. Okay, so hopefully you've now watched the FCE part three. You can see the question above my head, so you can watch the video and pay attention to the question at the same time. And let's go. Talk to each other about why these ideas would attract more tourists to the town. Now you've got 15 seconds to um, get ready to uh, talk about these questions and in these 15 seconds I'll just have a quick uh, chat about what's, what you can see. There are many many different uh, ideas that you can come up with. So why would these ideas attract more tourists to the town? Building holiday flats, clearly this is talking about residents, places to stay and so on. Providing parks, this is uh, entertainment, lots of things that you can do in parks, having more shops, People go on holiday to do shopping, different things to buy, uh, different uh, different products available in different markets, etc., etc. Putting up security cameras, so clearly there's a security focus here for the holiday makers, uh, particularly relevant in light of uh, some of the tragedies that have happened over the last 10 years on holidays. And building a night large nightclub, clearly this is entertainment-driven idea. So... Within 15 seconds, you can come up with, I would quite easily say, anywhere from 10 to 20 ideas based on these prompts. So when the exam starts, you should be ready to just go. Well, I think all the ideas on the, uh, on the booklets are quite good, actually. I think holiday flats will attract more tourists because there is just more space uh, for the tourists to live in while they're on holiday and what do you think about that? This is an excellent beginning to 
uh, the question. She, first of all, is aware of everything on the page. She says that all of these are good ideas. It's a great way to start. Uh, and then she chooses one of them, uh, talks about building flats. She doesn't identify it. She doesn't say, I'm going to talk about this one. She just mentions it and then she starts talking about it, gives us a few pros, uh, gives us a few pros, and then says to the other person, what do you think? Excellent question, drawing in the other person to the conversation. Of course, this is a skill that you should be practicing in preparation for the speaking exam. Well, uh, I agree with you, but maybe providing parks is much better. Mm. Excellent response. Uh, I agree with you, but maybe doing something else would be better. Straight away, we have a discussion. I think she could have added more. I think she could have given us much more of her opinion. I think she could have given us a pro and a con or added something to the discussion. But what she's in effect done is has said, I agree with you. What about this? What do you think? There needs to be a little bit more from her in this conversation. Why do you think that, actually? Excellent question straight away. Why do you think that? It's an excellent question. In other words, she's saying, tell me more. Support your ideas. Give me a pro. Give me a con. Because I think to spend time in parks are good with the family. Yeah, I think you have, can have a lot of fun in parks, though. Just having a nice picnic, picnic with your friends or stuff. So the a girl says it's good uh, to have... Um, she gave us one reason and that's it. She kind of just stopped there. And then the girl with the blonde hair just came in with another reason to develop that conversation. So building conversation doesn't always have to be on the basis of prompts. What do you think? I agree. What do you think? I disagree. What do you think? Because that sounds rather artificial, but simply taking what someone else is saying and then giving another advantage or giving another disadvantage, it shows that you're interacting and that you're engaging and you're, uh, and you're not just relying on obvious prompts, which are a little bit artificial, uh, to continue the conversation. Yeah, that would be nice. But um, more shops... Yeah, that, I think it would be nice because I think a lot of uh, people, mostly women, like shopping. And I think having a lot of shops in your town uh, would, would be nice for uh, the shopaholics. <laughs> yes. Or... So the blonde girl once again chooses another area. She gives us a pro. She gives us a nice vocabulary with shopaholics. Or, I don't know, maybe the tourists uh, like to spend more time in parks than go shopping, no? Mm. But the girl, uh, the brunette, is unmoved. She's determined that parks is the best idea. Uh, tactically speaking, this is probably uh, a bit of a mistake. She could move the topic on to talk about security cameras or nightclubs. Uh, it's good that she disagrees. She doesn't really give us anything to support that disagreement, which I think she should do. And she doesn't really ask a question at the end. She just says, no, which isn't a question. At this level at FCE, there should be a properly formed question. So uh, try to stay away from no or yes um, as question forms because they're not really question forms. Maybe. If you are kind of a nature person, if you like nature a lot, then parks are probably much better than a lot of shops. <laughs> Now, the blonde girl here uses a fantastic word, and there are many other words just like this one, um, which suit this part of the Part 3 exam. Now, remember, this part of the Part 3 exam is about the discussion. It's about the debate. It's about what do you think, I think this, how about this, and having that discussion. And so words like I think at this stage are probably not the best words to use, but words like maybe, perhaps possibly, are excellent words to use because they open up the conversation into pros and cons or having a discussion about pros and cons. Mm, putting up security cameras. Yeah, that, I think that's a really good idea because then the town is safe and tourists will feel safe. Yes, with the, with the cameras are a good idea because uh, the people are more safe. Mm -hmm. that's that. 
Once again, the blonde girl chooses another topic. The brunette girl is not driving this conversation. She's reacting. She's being reactive. The blonde girl is being proactive. She's driving the conversation forward, and she's going to get marks for this. It will be seen positively. So when you're doing the exam, you want to be proactive and reactive. You don't just want to be uh, proactive. You don't just want to be reactive, but there's got to be that element of conversation. Uh, she suggests security cameras. She gives us a pro. The brunette girl just repeats exactly what she says. She's not really helping herself here. Without cameras, no. of the people that want to stall. Yeah. Building a no, I don't think building a large nightclub is really a good idea to attract tourists. I don't know. It depends the. It depends. Maybe, perhaps, possibly. It depends. All of this vocabulary is good vocabulary for promoting and driving that conversation. The tourists know. There's that horrible question. No, it's not a question. Yeah, that definitely. But I don't think no. uh, it will attract a lot of tourists because of one club. I think yes. it's a combination of several things mm -hmm. that attract tourists. Thank you. So, from the first part of the part three question, there is definitely some element of conversation. There's definitely to and from. Uh, the blonde girl clearly has got a wider range or a better degree of comfort, uh, confidence or fluency with English. The brunette girl's struggling a little bit to get her ideas across, and certainly she's being entirely reactive. Blonde girl driving the conversation, choosing all of the elements that they've got to talk about, and uh, she comes out, I think, on top in this uh, first part of the part three. Now you have about a minute to decide which idea would be best for the town. Okay, so what do you think is the uh, best idea for the town to do? Excellent way to start. Um, she's clearly well trained. She knows what to say. What do you think? Mm, I think building holiday flats, maybe. Mm, yes, why do you think that? Why do you think that? Excellent question. She's she's dragging the other girl into the conversation, whether she wants to be in it or not. Mm, because all the tourists like to have flats to stay. Yeah, but maybe the parks are just uh, is, are a better idea to provide because they. And remember, just because you've got to make a decision in this part of the part three question doesn't mean that you can't have more uh, debate, that you can't have more discussion. The brunette girl suggested the building the holiday flats. She gives a rather weak reason to support that. And then the blonde girl says, maybe, but I think something else. Uh, and then she continue, and then she gives us a few pros for that. Uh, they're really nice to just uh, have a walk in and enjoy the in, in nature with your friends and family. Nice vocabulary, enjoy nature with your friends and family. So, if you like uh, providing parks, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, I do think that's a good idea. So there's some area of compromise here. Initially, the brunette girl says, I want building holiday flats is the most important. But then she under, uh, she agrees to compromise, saying, oh, maybe if you like this, then that. And that's an important skill as well. Yeah. and But also the holiday flats, I think, is a good idea because um, you, have to, you have to have space for the tourists to live in. So if there's no space, there probably won't be a lot of tourists. Mm -hmm. And here we have compromise from the blonde girl. I'm listening to what you're saying, and I also think it's quite a good idea. Yeah. Thank you. And, that, and that's the end of the part three. So there is a decision of some kind in as far as they can see the merits of two of the options, and uh, they haven't discussed the other one, so let's assume that they've just discussed that they think building holiday flats and providing parks are the most important things. So you can see that if we break down that part three for the FCE, there's a lot of things going on. There are lots of good things and there are a few bad things as well. Clearly, the girl with the blonde hair comes out uh, with a slightly better score, at least in my opinion, um, from that part three section. Under the original video, you can see the examiner's notes for what the examiners think of the girl's performances. So be sure to check those out. Maybe they... I, ha I haven't read the notes. 
I don't know what the examiners thought. This is, I'm talking to you from my point of view as a teacher, not an examiner. So from the point of view of a teacher, I would like to see a lot more from the brunette girl. The blonde girl does a really good job in terms of being proactive in terms of leading, in terms of getting the brunette girl to come into the conversation, asking lots of wonderful questions. So she's clearly well prepared and she's ready for part three. The brunette girl doesn't do so well. Maybe I'm being a bit harsh. If you disagree with me, if you agree with me, leave some comments in the comment section below. Okie dokie. Um, let's pop that out of the way. And let's now have a look at the CAE question. So in exactly the same way, have a look at the CAE part three section um, and then come back to this video in a few minutes and we'll go through that. OK, so you can see the question above my head. Uh, what might people have to consider when making these decisions? Uh, choosing university, starting a family, moving to another country, finding a job, getting married. The scope of this question is huge. You could talk for an hour, if not more, about this question and those five topics. So speaking for two minutes should be no problem whatsoever. So um, let's just see how our, uh, how our candidates get on. Now talk to each other about what people might have to consider when making these decisions. Okay, so... Let's talk about choosing a university first. Mm -hmm. So we've got a clear direction there. Um, the, uh, the girl starts off saying, let's do this first. It's a good way to start. Um, I think if you remember the FCE, it, uh, it was a little bit less direct and a little bit more natural. Although there's nothing wrong with saying, OK, let's, let's, let's concentrate on this topic first. Mm, I think people have to think about, well, First, the students have to think about what they like, yeah. of course, when they, they want choose to study. a university. Yeah, and students and parents have to think about money because in some countries, universities universities um, is very are very uh, expensive, like in England here. And I think you have also to um, choose the right university for. Um, like where you you can study the subject you really want to, and also that the university with the subject is the best university with mm -hmm. from all the universities yes. with the subject subject. Like the best results in an exam or something mm -hmm. like that. And what so lots of interesting things in that first in that first analysis. First of all, you notice that there are no obvious um discussion leads that none neither of them say what do you think about this or do you agree with me or do you disagree with me the um the conversation is quite natural and you can see how they agree the boy interrupts the girl to say and dot 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 so continuing the girl's conversation and then afterwards the girl says like dot 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 and continues the boys conversation so it's clear that they're in a sense of agreement and it's fairly natural agreement um, and it might work for the exam i think to get the balance right, it's got to be a balance between kind of natural agreement and natural continuation and using the more formulaic approach, which is um, this is my opinion. What do you think? Um, although that is if it's overused, it's more artificial, uh, but it's important and you it's useful to get that balance correct. So having that natural process of agreeing with someone by using conjunctions or comparative forms and by using um, standard set phrases to uh, encourage other people to get involved. Because if there was one criticism of this uh, analysis was that there was no explicit uh, I need you to get involved or tell me what your opinion is. Um, so let's continue. About starting a family um again um there is a financial criteria to consider i think um and well when you start a family you need to talk maybe about children yeah mm. you have also to think about 
copy your um, ready already yes. to build a family and if you have to, enough money and and where to settle yeah. and yeah. you need to think about the jobs maybe yes. because I think that now um, most of the parents I mean the two parents are working so they need to yeah to take that in consideration and so once again, there was no obvious um, leads or cues for the other person to get involved. Um, there's still very much a sense of agreement. We cover lots of topics. There's no, at this point, sense of uh, discussion in the form of disagreement, which is what I'd like to see perhaps a little bit more of, because disagreement uh, is always good um, just for the sake of disagreeing sometimes in order to express your opinion to give yourself a chance to speak because the girl is leading this at the moment she's being uh, she's the one that's doing most of the talking the boy's being quite reactive at this stage contributing a little bit and maybe the boy could uh, start disagreeing from the point of view of giving himself a little bit more time to speak um, or the uh, alternatively the boy should be a little bit more assertive in terms of getting involved into the conversation but there's um i beginning to get the feeling at this stage that we're missing some of the points that part 3 needs in terms of agreement disagreement getting other people involved uh, a clear expression of uh, your opinion expressing what other people think because at the moment we're just going through topics we have to consider this 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 there's no um which and it's it's almost like they're making a list of ideas without getting into the discussion. Now, the first topic that they discussed, you might be able to get away with that. But this is the second topic that they're discussing, and it's following exactly the same format. So at this point, uh, as a teacher, I'd be encouraging the discussion, uh, get some disagreement in there, and, um, and allow people to start having opinions. And um, moving to another country... <clears throat> I think the language is very important yeah. <laughs> and uh, there are some restrictions as well about languages like if you want to move to Australia you mm. need to, to pass the IELTS exam. Thank you. So that part of the part three exam, that discussion phase from my point of view, um, there were a few good things, um, but there were also quite a few bad things as well. For, for example, the boy doesn't really get involved at all. The boy doesn't get to express himself. Although the question says, what might people have to consider when making these decisions? And that question, okay, you might argue, okay, you have to come up with lists for this. Yes, you do, but then you've also got to be able to adapt the question to show off the skills that you need to show off in this part of the speaking exam. So having opinions, agreeing, disagreeing, getting other people involved, you can always you can also do that in the process of creating a list of answers as well. So maybe it's a question of lack of preparation, maybe it's a question of lack of focus. Maybe it's a question of lack of awareness of what part three is all about, but um, they could have done, I think, a better job. Saying that, the vocabulary was okay, the grammar structures were okay, so there are some positives to take away as well. Now you have about a minute to decide in which situation it's most important to make the right decision. Okay, so now you've got to make uh, choose which one's the most important. So straight away, listening to that, reacting, you're thinking of hierarchy. One's going to be better than the other one, which is going to be better than the other one, which is going to be better than the other one. So here, you've got to make a decision, but that decision automatically means that there's going to be discussion as well. So let's see how they get on. Okay, I think the most important is getting married, because when um, two people find the uh, find each other and they think about getting married they should really think about it because it's an important decision yeah, and they I agree with you don't just, um... so straight away the boy wakes up and says i think this um he's making a decision uh, he's putting his cards on the table straight from the get-go um that's okay as long as you say, what do you think? Do you agree with me or so on? Now, as it turns out, he didn't really have to say that, although he could have said that. 
uh, because the girl said, yes, I agree with you. Um, but the problem with that is that you've now killed the question. Boy says one thing, this is it. Girl says, I agree with you. Now you're in a, a tactical problem because you've just killed the conversation. How can you now go and have a discussion when you've just agreed on the first thing together? You've got to be careful of that. It's a good to have an opinion. It's a good to say, I think this. But in saying that, you've also got to say, but let's also talk about the other things as well, because I might be wrong. And you've got to have that discussion. So saying, I think this from the get-go might work, but be aware that you've got to encourage debate after that as well. Get married, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, then you, you have to sign kind of a contract and you're... Um, those people are together for a whole their lives, so they need mm. to think about it before getting married. I think this is also connected to starting a family. Excellent stuff. So they're thinking of reasons to justify their decision. The girl's coming up with ideas, and the boy has a fantastic idea. Let's now link this to other things. Let's start now talking about a hierarchy. So getting married is now connected to starting a family. So he's managed to get out of jail. Let's see where he goes. Maybe I think to it's... another country. Well, yeah. yeah. Girl gets involved. That might involve also moving to another country. Suddenly, the uh, discussion hasn't died. It's come back to life. Everything yeah. realizing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> so, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, but even though we've almost succeeded in saving the discussion the discussion almost dies. Uh, so you, it's almost a question of snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. Um, suddenly we've got nothing to say. Everyone's umming and erring. Um, you haven't got much time to discuss this. So what does the examiner do? Does the examiner jump in and stop it? Or does the examiner just say, I'll give them a few extra seconds? When you are um, getting married, I think it's better to first get married before you start family because then you're like yeah. couple, yeah. Um, kind of, yes, a uh, legal uh, couple or Thank something you. like that. The examiner uses the benefit of her wisdom and experience just to give them a few extra seconds. The boy comes out with a few more pros. The girl agrees. So here in the second part, in the decision-making part, the boy says more and contributes more than the girl. So that might, you, are, you might argue, it might balance out the first part where the girl was taking control. In general, was it a good part three? Uh, in general, it was in terms of it being quite natural, it being quite fluent, and so on. Was it good from the point of view of ticking the boxes of what part three wants, which is an analysis, a discussion, agreeing, disagreeing, uh, expressing opinions, and so on, so on? That bit I felt was lacking, and it could have come through a little bit more, a little bit more strongly, if the preparation had been better. Okay, and that's my breakdown of the part three questions for the FCE and CAE. You might agree with me, you might disagree with me, you might think I'm a horrible monster and I'm being too harsh, uh, and you might be right. Leave a comment in the section below, but you can see how difficult part three is and how much you've got to contribute and put in in terms of language tools, language functions, in order to get a good score. In general, the FCE um, part three was better than the CAE part three. Certainly the blonde girl in the FCE part three was clearly well prepared, had great skills, was able to lead and uh, lead the conversation. CAE was more balanced and you could argue it was more natural, but it was lacking in many of the things that part three want, wants. Now, if you want to check out what part three wants, then once again, check out my video, which was from week three, day five, in which I break down part three and I go through everything that part three needs. And then after this, practice, 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 practice. Practice not only being able to speak for a minute, practice not only brainstorming and coming up with many, many different ideas, but also practice with someone else, having a conversation in test conditions, recording yourself and making improvements to your ability to communicate under the rules of part three. Because you're going to, as I said, it's a question of finding that balance between 
giving the examiner the language that the examiner is listening out for and also making it natural because the last thing you want to do is create an artificial conversation what do you think i think this is good what do you think i think this is bad because that just sounds awful and you're not going to score many points with the examiner so getting that balance is really really important but it's something that you can practice and something a skill that you need to develop Okay, I've covered a lot of material here. If you've got any questions for me at all, then leave them in the comments section below. Have a good weekend, guys. I'll be back again on Monday with another writing question, so I'll see you after the weekend. See you later.